I am Edja Mokan from IDEA at the University of Lorraine, and I am here with André Lapidus from FAR at the University of Paris 1, Panthéon Sorbonne. We want to talk about a recent book by Margaret Shabas and Carl Wenerland. This book, A Philosopher's Economist, is a book on David Hume as an economist, and this single fact makes it remarkable. I mean, we all know Hume as a philosopher, but as economists, our knowledge is usually very limited. We are used to considering him as the authors of essays on money, interest, and international trade, and that's all. A great quality of this book is to make us understand that Hume's economics is much more than that, and that it is rooted in all his work in philosophy, in ethics, in history, or in politics. Well, uh, I'll be more specific. Uh, the book doesn't only argue that Hume's economics is an outstanding achievement, but also that he's an economist in everything he does. He's an economist when he's writing on epistemology, metaphysics, ethics, politics, and so on. In the words of the authors, economics is the unifying thread of all his works. But of course, Hume has a lot to say about economics, even beyond his three essays on money, interest and international trade. But is it sufficient to make him an economist? We don't think so. It is true that Hume shows great familiarity with practical economic issues. The authors, for instance, show that he was involved in the return to metallic currency in Quebec. It is also true that he has something to say about what will be the foundation of specific components of economic knowledge, such as decision or development, for example. The authors also stress other issues, like the explanation of credit, in a quite unfamiliar way. They point out the isomorphism between a coin and the Eucharistic wafer to explain why about credit we have to go beyond the material existence of money. But although these points justify economists' appeal to Hume, they don't show that Hume himself was an economist. Indeed, we need something more to qualify Hume as an economist. And this something more simply does not exist. And saying that does not depreciate you on any front. Being an economist means that when you ask a question in economics, Say, for instance, the explanation of uh, accumulation of capital. The answer is always economics, as well as the steps of the argument. But Hume doesn't do that. What he wants to do from the very beginning, that is, since the treatise of human nature, is to build a science of man, not only an economic science. And this has most interesting consequences. There is a nice chapter in the book on industry, knowledge, and humanity. The first refers to economics, the second to arts and sciences, the third to sociability. The authors find here a sign of the omnipresence of economics. We understand that in another way. What Hume argues is that the development of industry cannot be achieved unless knowledge and humanity are increasing at the same time. In a way, each of them facilitates the development of the two others. Uh, yet this uh, interdependent development cannot be taken for granted. An example for this is the mass immigration of the Huguenots to England. The French and the English policies at that time had opposite consequences. They cannot be accounted for only on economic grounds. They need the interplay of industry, knowledge, and humanity. So that if you want to deal with such questions as uh, the effect of religion on uh, society, technological transfer, economic development, you cannot be only an economist. And it was Hume's great skill to have understood this before the time economics existed as such. And it is a quality of Margaret Shadows and Carl Gwendolyn's book to lead us not only to consider the whole body of Hume's works, but also to raise such questions. And 
for this, we want to thank them.